So again, just as a refresher of what we covered last week, um, the agenda is going to be to just uh, touch base on what these TOPS1 CCR codes are and what they're used for for anybody that might be just popping in today. There is a recording available of Tuesday's webinar on the code setup if you need to access and watch that. As always, you can reach out to me or success at topsoft.com or your customer success representative if you've got their contact information. So the agenda. What are CCR codes? Why are we talking about them? And then immediately into the requirements for conducting property inspections with your mobile device, uh, and then best practices for actually conducting the inspections, and then resources and Q&A with whatever time we have left. So what are TOPS1 CCR codes and why are we talking about them? The CCNRs, as you probably know, are the covenants, conditions, and restrictions for a community. They're in every HOA, they're basically the community rules and regs of what you can and can't do as a homeowner. And the ultimate purpose of them is to preserve property values, protect, enhance, et cetera. Uh, the TOPS 1 CCNR codes are configurable codes within each community that allow the user to predefine various CCR related scenarios for easy entry into TOPS 1 and processing of property violations and architectural modification requests. So all those steps and different nuances of where to find, where to apply hearings, where to you know, apply charges for architectural modification requests. You can set up different scenarios for all that. That's more of Tuesdays. Um, today, we'll be looking at how to actually implement all that. So requirements for CCR codes and inspections. Again, you've got your governing docs uh, that go through all of the actual articles and rules and regs. That's where you're going to build your codes from. Then your code setup, each code's gonna have an alias, a description, action processes, and templates associated with it, and then ultimately performing the property inspections once that all is all set up. The requirements for conducting the inspections, uh, you just have to have a mobile device with web access. So you get to your TOPS one through the web, through any mobile device or a tablet, smartphone, uh, and you just need Google Chrome as a browser. Other browsers will work to a certain degree, but Google Chrome is without a doubt gonna give you the best performance. It's not an app. We get that question a lot. It's just web-based. You just go to one.topsoft.com. You log in with your credentials. You access the CCR tickets menu, and away you go. And again, we'll look at that in real time here in just a bit. So first slide up is property inspections. Uh, this just explains that TOPS1 is designed to allow users to conduct property inspections with a mobile device, such as a tablet or smartphone. Google Chrome is the best browser to use. You can find the CCNR tickets menu and the CCNR index page and format or save your views specific to your liking using the filter and sort and display option. So I'll show you a little bit of this too. Uh, it's really helpful if you like to see all of your CCR tickets in a list versus in a card view, because it's easier on a mobile device that way. There are little ways you can change the sorting and the, the filtering. And so we'll go through some of that as well to show you how to do that. And that's good for all parts of TOPS1 and all these menus, not just CCR, but especially important when you're doing a drive. Within the CCNR tickets menu, you'll see all filtered records and can select from three options on each ticket or record. So you're gonna have the screen fed up to you with all open violations and you'll see what steps have been taken, what step is due, for instance, on this first one, it's due for a second violation by certified mail, it's a fine warning. It is way past due obviously, so that shows up in red uh, and I can close it out with the X. I can use the comment bubble to record a note either by typing it in or using voice to text on my smartphone or tablet. It will recognize that, works very well. And then you've got your plus sign over here, which lets you add it to the queue basically to take action on it. So if there's a next step due that's a second letter or a fine, as you see on some of these, like right here, there's a $50 fine that's gonna be applied. Uh, you can get some visibility into that before you decide what to do with it and then just use that plus sign to queue it up for next action. Uh, once you've got all of them selected, you use this take action button up here under the golden actions tab. And that's gonna basically queue it all up for you to make any last minute changes or go ahead and post any fines or fees and process those letters and emails. And again, we'll take a look at some of this in the live demonstration here shortly. I know this is a little bit small, but just to give you a glimpse into what to expect. Uh, once you go through all of the steps on the prior page of closing out, putting comments, and queuing stuff up for next action, you'll get this accrued page where all of the CCNR activity will show up in kind of a final view for you to go through and line by line make changes or process as is. So for every single one of these, you'll have a little pencil icon that you can click that opens it up to edit, whether it's the next action or the fee amount or the template that you're sending, and you can put a reason for the change. This one specifically says the homeowner called after the inspection, said they'll mow this weekend, so hold 
activity. Um, so that would take care of it in this batch view, so you don't have to go into that specific CCR record for Mr. and Mrs. Norsing to do that. Sometimes if you have uh, board members who want to sign off on this stuff first or view the pictures and the detail, you, you know that reason for change might be important for them to know why they do or don't want you to pursue something. So a few different applications for this. Um, but at this point, you can edit and make any changes. You could use the trash can to delete the CCNR item from the batch completely if it's something you want to take out of the process altogether. Once you're done with those last minute changes and ready to actually post and send, you click this post batch button. It'll ask you if you're sure, of course, and you say yes. The next screen will give you the ability to, or the, that screen you're on, I'm sorry, will give you the ability to also select who gets the letter copies. By default, it's just going to go to the primary homeowner's alternate mailing address, but you do have options to issue to all owners of the property, any addresses for the primary owner, any offsite addresses. Maybe there's a third party property manager who also needs to receive the notifications. If you want the tenant at the property to receive a copy, so all of those options here. And then for new violations, that's going to be the process you take for anything that's open and outstanding. For anything new, there's another little nifty page. Uh, we recommend keeping that open as a separate tab, and I'll show you how this works. But you'll have one page open for all of your open stuff that you're following up on, and then a tab for all new violations. So you'll use this option from the CCR tickets page for new CCNR record. Open it up in a new tab. If you right click, you'll have the option to open link in new tab. And then you have this page that you can leave open, this tab you can leave open, where every time you cite something new that's not already been cited and you want to add it to the list, you just put in your detail. If you watch the webinar and setting up codes and action processes and templates and all that, you know that you can use this drop down here to select CCR code and it will pre-fill all of the relevant detail. If you want to update the action to resolve at that point or something, again, voice to text does work. So you could literally be driving down the road, talking into the device or walking or driving a go-kart or whatever and not have to stop and type or write it down. Pretty cool. And then for every new violation you want to add after that, you just click save and add new. Lastly, just to find the communications tracking of these on the respective activity feed, CCR, owner property, you can find the backup of the batch of violation and architectural letters, or specifically if you just did it for one property, it shows the same. But just to show that if I were to open up this property 688 River Drive, which was one of the letters we sent in a batch on the prior screen for Mr. and Mrs. Norrising, you can see that in their activity feed, the first item showing is a letter that I sent just this morning in preparation for this. So you've got lawn violation, second violation. I could click this little arrow and pull it down to see the letter copy and some more details as well. Obviously, I can right click the CCNR item and it'll take me to that ticket and all the detail and pictures and such. But just to know if you ever need to pull up the batch detail or CCR detail, it's always going to store in the activity feeds. Uh, this is not the end of the webinar. As I said, I'll take you guys through a uh, a demo of how this works in real time, but I do want you to have these resources in case you want to review any of these after the webinar. Again, the recording will be shared and this PowerPoint is in the handouts of the chat in case you want that. At the end, we'll take some questions, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop into a live environment for you and show you guys what this is all about. My first tab open here is the TOPS1 homepage. I like to start here just so everybody's on the same page of how I'm navigating. So from the home page, you've got your management company or community name here. Uh, just to make sure all of the codes and templates and everything are set up, I do want to quickly show you just as a refresher where to do that. And if you need more info, the CCR codes uh, session from Tuesday will help you with this. But in the admin menu, you can scroll down to related links. And you've got your template library. That's where you're going to set up the template letters. And within the community itself, now I'm in an actual community, I can scroll down similarly to that related link section for the community, clicking codes. And then all my CCNR codes are set up here with those action processes and templates and such. So just to give you a visual into where this is set up in case you didn't watch that last webinar, but once that stuff is all set up and ready to go, then you navigate to the CCR tickets menu. I'm going to just do it for this community, so I'm going to use my community selector to make sure I'm on Hawks Landing. I'll go into the CCNR tickets menu, and it's going to feed up this list of all my open violations, just like you saw on the screenshot. Now, what you didn't see was the filters option. 
I can click this button and it's already set to show me a list in the way I've specified. So you could see this view is called ASCCR view and list with open street address order default. So Amanda Sanchez CCR view, I can make this a public view for everybody to benefit from and use, or if I just wanted it for me, I could keep it private. This is kind of another demonstration in and of itself how to use these filters, but that is linked in the PowerPoint presentation under resources. And there are webinars uh, just like this one on best use of filters. But just to show you how it works on the CCR menu, you can see there's a few different examples. But let's say I want to create a new one. We'll call it AS test for webinar CCR ride list. That's probably something similar to what you'll call it. Again, availability for all users or just me. You can set that as your default view for the page, save it, and then from that point forward, every time you as a user log into this page, that's how you're gonna see the data. So just to quickly show what it would look like on a mobile device. So let's say I'm on a tablet doing this. I can shrink it up a little bit just to show how it's gonna appear on a slightly smaller screen. Get this out of the way. And then if I shrink it up even further and continue to do that, you can see how it even reformats for a smartphone view. So regardless of the device you're using, it will repaint itself and display nicely. But in my personal opinion, tablet is the best, obviously. We've got some different filters you can use up here. Uh, aside from just me creating the, the list view and all open items, if you wanted to sort just by a certain type of CCNR code, if you wanted to look at just open architectural modifications and you know, follow up on those. If you just want to look at roof inspections, because those are hard to see in a typical drive-by, uh, you know, things like that, people who are due for fining, you can use different parameters and um, settings to, to filter those views and search that way. So right now I'm just seeing all open violations. Again, I can go through and with the close option, close out the violation. Are you sure you want to close? Yes, I do. If I want to use the comment bubble to make notes, again, I can use voice to text here or just type it in. We'll save on the CCR record, obviously, or I can use the plus sign. This is obviously the most commonly used. What you're gonna do is you drive along and see that these are still issues and the owner needs the next notice and the next fine or whatever is due next. The system's gonna know to queue that action up. You tell it you go ahead and wanna do that. Once you've selected all the ones you want to pursue, come up here to take action. You can apply it to an existing batch. So say you've got an admin who's doing two property drives for you and you want her, both of her inspections to go in the same batch. That might be the use case for having one batch. Otherwise, just create it in its own little batch. And here's that option. If I wanted to include options for the tenant or anything else, I could select those under generate additional letters. I can make any last minute changes I want. Here's Norising again. Uh, Norising is moving. We'll say that and send friendly reminder to new owners, something like that. We've got a pretty cool new resale process for this too that helps you do that. Just a side note, <laughs> but you could change the next action. If there's one due, uh, these you can stipulate in the action processes. If I needed a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and so on and so forth, you're not limited there. That you pick your next action, you can change the fee amount, you can change the template that's going to be sent. Make sure you've got that reason for change and then save it. If you'd like to use the garbage can to take somebody out altogether, remove from batch. Once you're all ready to go, post batch. Are you sure you want to do it? Yes. It's generating, doing its thing, print. And then all of the samples or the printouts will come into a batch here. If you want to find any of these backup copies or communication items on the actual properties, it will be there as well as the CCR activity. So Tara Donak and 5210 Reserve Drive or 4585 Ridgemore will have all this activity noted. And let's check that out. So we'll use Tara Donak, CCR 29174. I'm gonna open this up so that I can check out on her activity feed where to find that history. Scroll down to the activity for this property. You can see right here, $50 fine, cut grass third violation. If I wanted to pull it down for more detail or close it from there, add comments. There's some pretty cool options in the activity feed too, but just let you go in and view any old letter copies, et cetera. 
the new violation process. I uh, want to make sure I show you this as well. So you've got your tab open on your mobile device for all of the tickets that you're processing. Let me get back in here. Take just a second to load it. Now let's say you're going through doing your drive, you've got all these selected, you've noticed none of these violations were taken care of, but let's say you also come upon something new that needs to be done. Let's go to meeting pane out of the way. You could again, select any of these predefined codes. We'll say clear balcony, for instance, it pre-fills all the CCNR article information, the detailed description, the action to resolve. Again, you can make changes or voice to text here. Upload as many images as you want. It's not limited. You could pull them directly up from your camera roll or your galleries or your drives, whatever the case may be. And then save and add new for everyone you want to do. Oh yeah, probably pretty important to select a property or a homeowner first to make sure you're actually citing somebody. Now, once that's done, oh again with the Nora Singh, no wonder they have so many violations because they always pop up in the example. Save and add new, and then it's going to just give you the option as many times as you need to create new violations. So between that and using the open violation and architectural modification list and the filters and uh, sorting by codes, and let's say you're in a specific part of the community and you just want to inspect a group of buildings or a certain section, you can even use the filters to limit that just so it's not so overwhelming in your dashboard views, especially when you're on that mobile device. Smartphone can be a little bit more difficult to use than a tablet in my opinion but again it does display nicely for you